فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ذا الثالث إن شاء الله تعالى root cause of extremism we're now going to go on to the third root cause of extremism and that is مقابلة الانحراف بالانحراف مقابلة الانحراف بالانحراف it is to resp respond deviation with another deviation and that's very common when extremism happens in exaggeration you find many people they try to respond to that exaggeration but they fall into the opposite <coughs> which is what? Negligence. And that's why he mentions that two things are always, re always needed, which is knowledge and justice. And that's the only way to deal with any doubts that are brought forward. If you have knowledge and if you're just, in other words, if you're able to give to your opponent and your enemy that which they are right in, and you're, you could say, yes, they're right. That, what, that is what brings about good. لذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية he says والكلام في الناس when you're speaking about a person who's fallen short maybe in innovation or whatnot يجب أن يكون بعلم وعدل it has to be based on knowledge and it has to be based on justice لا بجهل وظلم and it cannot be done with ignorance and oppression كحال أهل البدع like the innovators do when the Khawarij came out and they were the first group to ever come out the opposite, which is the murji'ah, they try to tackle this extreme exaggeration. But what they fell short was what? And what they, when they, where they went wrong was what? That they responded, they responded to this extreme exaggeration with an extreme negligence. And the reason why they fell into that is because they refused to take the matter wholeheartedly. And Allah commands us in the Quran, "Udukhulu fi silmi kafa." And I'm going to expand on to that more in the next one, inshallah Taala. But an example for this, for example, is. Um, well, before I go into that, there's a statement that also strengthens that. مقابلة الانحراف بين الانحراف. Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, if you read Kitab al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, when he talks about مقتل الحسين when Hussein was killed, and we all know Hussein was killed unjustly. He was oppressed. Are you with me? And those who killed him were tyrant, unjust individuals. Are you with me, brothers? But those who felt that he was oppressed, they fell into another extreme. They raised him. They took him outside his robe and his position. So these people went short in the rights of Hussein ibn Ali, a noble companion, the family of the messenger, the grandson of the Prophet والسلام, the grandson of the messenger, والسلام, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They didn't recognize his value and his status and his rank in the Sharia and how Allah Taala he honored the Prophet's family. So what did they do? They belittled him and they killed him savagely. But another group, came, so they were extreme in leniency. And then another group came and what did they do? They done extreme in exaggeration. They took him outside his room and said that they worship him now. The Rafidah. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, he mentions this is from what? Babu muqabalati al-bid'atu bi-bid'ati mithluha. It is like repelling, responding, innovation with an innovation like it. And then he goes on to say, لا يرفع البدعة A بدعة cannot be uplifted. It, can be, it can't be removed. إلا السنة الصحيحة You can only respond to it and deal with it through an authentic sunnah. If there's any deviation that occurs from somebody, you can respond to them by going back to authentic narrations. And here, of course, the Quran is in there. And you find this manifest today in different shapes and forms. For example, we hear, I mean, we, we rarely see Muslims 
okay? For example, get upset when Nabiullah Isa is insulted and called names. But when Nabiullah Muhammad is given called names and is insulted, it's as though what? This is another ghulu. Or sometimes what happens is, is that because the Christians and the Jews, they went extreme. The Jews went extreme on Musa and the Christians went extreme on what? Isa ibn Maryam, right? The Muslims, they forget that they should mention the virtue of these two prophets. So they just don't speak about it. Are you with me? The reason why they do that is because the transgression that occurred from the Christians and the Jews made some, um, a lot of us not to speak about it, right? Are you there? The next one is also like Al-Irad an Fadail Ali, Ali's virtues. Not speaking about his virtues. Not speaking about the virtue of Al Bayt Rasulullah, the Prophet's family. Alayhi salatu was salam is also something that extremism has happened regarding it, regarding some of the Ahlul Sunnah. Leniency in that matter, extreme in leniency. Whereas the Rafidah, they done what? Extreme in exaggeration. So all of the time, you find muqabalatul inhiraf ibn inhiraf. Deviation is responded with another deviation. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ لَيْسَتِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ Allah tells us that وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ The Yehud said لَيْسَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ The Nasara are upon nothing وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ And then the Nasara said to the Yehud لَيْسَتِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ But what happened? وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ But they're both reading the divine scriptures. Do we believe that? We believe from their religion is what? Some things that are correct. As our Prophet ﷺ, when they used to come to him sometimes and they would tell him matters, he would say, Iqraran bihi. In agreement with their statements, he would say, Naam, that's true. There's this ayah to support your argument. Are you with me? He didn't just dismiss it because they are Jews and he differs with them. Or that they are Christians and he dismissed everything. You look at debates today in Hyde Park, for example. Some people, because they, get, they don't have much knowledge and they don't have much understanding, a person, and I've seen this, wallah, it's shocking. There was, a, there was an individual who was being debated with. And this kafir, he did his homework. He did his homework. So he went and got narrations from Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari and Muslim. kitabaini ba'da kitab The two most authentic books after the, after the Quran. So he had it with him. He had it with him. Okay. And, oh, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't have it with him. Uh, I think he didn't have it with him. So anyways, he mentioned the narration and he mentioned the what? The evidence. He puts it forward and he says, look, this is what Allah said, the Prophet ﷺ said, and he mentioned it, the hadith. When you look at it, he said it right, correctly. This individual, on the other hand, ignorant, but wants to go and debate in Hyde Park. What did he respond by saying? Oh, that's, no, no, I don't think so, Bukhari. Denies it straight away. Because it doesn't go consistent with his previous argument, because he didn't know how to deal with this particular hadith. So what you've just done now is muqabalatul inhiraf bin inhiraf. This person is arguing with deviation, sahih, but you responding with another deviation. You've just dismissed what? Another jahil who came out in Hyde Park, a Qur'ani was debating with him. A Qur'ani was debating with him. So the Qur'ani said to him, jahl. This shows you an example of ignorance. The, uh, um, the Qur'ani said, of course, his argument is that the Qur'an should only be taken. So this jahil individual, he went and he said, Allah said in the Qur'an, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنُوا فَانْتَهُوا Anything that the Prophet ﷺ gives to you, take from him, and anything which he prohibits from you, stay away from. Now this Qur'an, he's done his little homework. He knows these verses, he was ready for it. So he said to him, but the verse is not in support with you. He said, what do you mean? He said, the context is talking about booties and spoils of war. Are you there? Spoils of war. And the ayah is saying that if the Prophet gives you something, take it from him, meaning if he gives you spoils of war, not, not, not hadith or anything, take it from him. And if he pre prevents something from you, spoils of war, then stay away from it. Don't take it from him. Then don't try to take it. This jahil doesn't know. He has no understanding. He said, where did you get this from? 
He said, that's the context. So then they both try to they start to look into their phones and then the ayah comes out. So this guy goes, oh, here it is. It's the context of everything. But he didn't, he wasn't able to narrow down his argument properly. And the Quran is right here. The context is right. It's talking about spoils of war. This Sunni individual, who's jahil, thought to himself that he dismissed that. When ayah after it is what? وَمَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى فَلِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِي الْقُرْبَى Afa is what? Fay is what? Fay is a f- um, spoils of war that the Muslims take when the disbelievers don't, we don't fight with the disbelievers. Ghanima is when they fight and they take it forcefully off them. Fay means when the disbelievers run away and the Muslims take their spoils, they take the, the booty. This individual dismissed that whole context. He should have said to the Qur'an, you're right in that. The context is right. But who said that it is khas to only that context? We know the qa'idah is what? Al-ibrata bi'umum al la bi khususi sabah. We also have Aisha radiallahu anha when a woman came up to her and he said, she said to him, she said to Aisha, I want to do tabattul. Tabattul. Meaning, I don't want to ever get married, I don't want to have children. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said to her, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so she, no, she recited the ayah, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوا وَمَا لَهَاكُمْ عَلُوا فَلْتَوْا And she said the Prophet got married, had children. So what did Aisha's istishhad of Aisha رضي الله عنها and evidence is what? That this ayah is used for something different to spoils of war, right? Ibn Kathir رحمه الله, in the same ayah, if you look at Tafsir Ibn Kathir, he brings in the story of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he said, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَا اللَّهُ كَاسْ بِي أَبْنَ وَاشِمَةً The woman who plucks her eyebrows. Are you there? The one that does extension, the one who does it for her, the one who does the plucking, and the one who does the plucking for her. May Allah's curse be upon them. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, This is in the Quran. So this woman, she went and she researched and she looked and she looked and she looked and she looked and she looked. She could, and she said, Ya Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, fascination be with you. I've read the Quran from cover to cover. I've not found a verse that says this. And then he said to her, Did you? She said, Yes. And she said, He said to her, الرسول, What the Prophet said is found in the Quran because Allah told us to take what the Prophet gives us. Are you with me, brothers? Are you there, brothers? Um, then the woman, she stood up and she went into Abdullah ibn Mas'ud's house just to find any discrepancy. So she looked at the women at the house and they plucked their, they plucked their eyebrows and she walked out. And she said, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, if any one of them did pluck her eyebrows, she would not stay in the same house as me. The point is here right now, is that the narration, that an argument that is needed from the person is that just because your opponent brings in evidence and it's correct, don't dismiss it like it's not. مُقَابَلَةٌ لِنْحِرَافِ بِنْحِرَافِ You fall into another deviation. ولذلك Imam Muhammad, it happened at this time that a person responded to an innovator but he came with mistakes. Imam Ahmed said he came with innovation and so did he. I think, don't quote me on this, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, I think it was him. He was told that a man, an individual, responded to the innovators. They told him. And then he said to them, did he respond with the kitab and the sunnah? And they said, no. And then he said to them, he responded with wrong as they were wrong. So this is important and it happens, it's very prominent, it's, it's common. This harms the religion as much as that person's argument and that person's deviation harms, your one harms. Rather, Ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, in his sharh of Aqeedatul Wasatiyya, he said that مُقَابَلَةُ الْبِدْعَةِ bid'a, That responding innovation with another even innovation, he said it only strengthens the previous innovation that you actually, you were trying to respond to. Ibn Uthaymin says that. In his sharh of Al-Aqeedatul Wasatiyya. The fourth, inshallah ta'ala, thing that is the root cause of extremism, Extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence is Focusing on some branches of the religion The person only gives importance to some of the parts of the religion And doesn't realize that the religion needs to, he has to be Like sometimes what happens is that A person focuses on aqidah And he focuses on tawheed But then he gives no importance to akhlaq and adab مثلا, and whenever a person says to him, Ya Akhi, akhlaq and adab, he doesn't accept it from them because, if it, because it's his opponent. Because it's what? It's his opponent. And Allah wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, 
سبحانه وتعالى ومن الذين قالوا إنا نصارى أخذنا ميثاقهم فنسوا حظا مما ذكروا به فأغرينا بينهم العداوة والبغضاء إلى يوم القيامة وسوف ينبئهم الله بما كانوا يصنعون الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us in this verse ومن الذين قالوا those who said إنا نصارى that we are Christians Allah says أخذنا ميثاقهم we have taken from them a covenant فنسوا they forgot حظا مما ذكروا به they forgot that which we told them and informed them of. Pay attention to this. Allah said we took a covenant from them and some of their laws and some of their regulations, they actually dismissed it. فَنَسُوا حَظًا مِمَّا Some of. The word mimma is min. تَبْعِضِيَةٌ here. Some. They just, some of the sharia, they just push it to the side. Allah says because of that, فَأَغْرَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةَ because of that, Allah placed enmity in their hearts towards one another. Until the day, day of judgment, Allah then says, وَسَوْفَ يُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ And they will be informed of what they did the day of judgment. So we need to realize that the religion is of shu'ab, branches. There are shu'abs that are asal, that are fundamentals, that the importance should be given to them first and for, for foremost. <laughs> But that doesn't entail and nor does it mean that you dismissed all the other shu'ab of the iman. And all of the shu'ab of ta'at and obedience. And that's what happens. The Sufi, if you look at them, they try to take the spiritual side, the ruhaniya side. You find some brothers, all of the, all that which they have taken is, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, aqeedah and tawheed, that's it. But like in akhlaq and adab, la hadha lahu. La hadha, lahu. There's no, there's nothing for it. So what happens is that the person, he falls short in other branches that are required from him, and dismisses the other. What it means is that he dismisses it. He doesn't believe that importance should be given to it at all. Of course, we don't mean that some people Allah opens some branches of the religion for him. He's, for example, a person who loves the Quran, the hifz of the Quran, qiraat, and that's what he's good at. But he's weak in hadith and he doesn't know much about hadith and not, what not. Another person, Allah opens usul al fiqh Another person, Allah opens mustalah hadith for him. That's not what it means. It means as long as he's not dismissing the other important sciences that they don't exist. He gives no importance to them. As the poet said, أَتَانَ أَنَّ سَهْلًا ذَمَّ جَهْلًا عُلُومًا لَيْسَ يَعْرِفُهُنَّ سَهْلُ عُلُومًا لَوْ دَرَاهَا مَا قَلَاهَا وَلَكِنَّ الرِّضَى بِالْجَهْلِ سَهْلُ A lot of the times people dismiss things because they are ignorant about it and that's something very easy for somebody to do to really dismiss something because they are ignorant about it and you find the qa'idah which is man jahila shay'an adah anyone who's ignorant of something shows enmity towards it hate doesn't like it <coughs> the reason for that is no other reason is except what the reason for that is because he's ignorant he doesn't like the people when the people speak Arabic because he doesn't know Arabic. For example, he doesn't like when the people read Quran, you know, different qira'at, different recitations and dialects, and different, you know, he doesn't like it. Why? Because he believes, he says, no, I well, only read Hafs. He gets angry. لَأَنَّهُ jahila. He's ignorant about it. And that's what happens. وَلِذَلِكَ Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, وَقِيمَةُ الْمَرْءِ مَا يُحْسِنُ وَالْجَاهِلُونَ لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ أَعْدَاءُ That... The honor of a person lies in what he can perfect and the good that he can come with. But والجاهلون لأهل العلم أعداء The ignorant ones, the ignorant ones are enemies of the scholars. They don't like the scholars. They don't like the scholars. So this is very important that we understand that the branches of the religion are very big and that we should know to give importance to all of it and admit that we are weak in one and that we're working towards it. And walidalika Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his Majmu' al Fatawa, if you look at the first volume, Ibn Taymiyyah, this particular point he drives it home. In Majmu' al Fatawa, this point which is al Ijtihadu fi ba'd al Shu'ab al Iman, striving in some branches of al Iman is something that he drives home and he makes sure that it's understood. Because one of the things that cause al Furqa wal Ikhtilaf. This unity and disagreement is each party is holding on to something that the other party isn't holding on to. 
this person is holding onto something, this part, person is holding onto another side of the religion, both of them are dismissing what's in the other person's hand. When in reality, they are both part of the religion. You see? And that's when justice and fairness comes from the person. That which they say, that that is right. Besides the point whether I agree with him as an individual or not. But this point is right. The fifth, which is the last, inshallah ta'ala, uh, root cause of al ghulu extremism. Extremism in exaggeration and extremism in, uh, uh, in negligence is tazayyun al-shaytan. Shaytan beautifying this to the people. Shaytan beautifies extremism to the people. Whether it be extremism in exaggeration or whether it be extremism in what? In negligence. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn al-Qayyim, he brings in his kitab إِغَاثَةُ الْلَهْفَانِ فِي مَصَائِدِ الشَّيْطَانِ And this is a statement transmitted from a group of pious predecessors, the Salaf. They used to say this and it's very common. They used to say مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرٍ Allah does not command a matter. Allah does not tell us to do something. إِلَّا وَلِلشَّيْطَانِ فِيهِ نَزْغَتَانِ Except, except that shaitan opens one of two paths from that command. إِمَّا إِلَىٰ تَفْرِيطٍ وَتَقْسِيرٍ وَإِمَّا إِلَىٰ مُجَاوَزَةٍ وَغُلُوٍ either, in, either extreme in exaggeration or extreme in negligence. Shaitan will look at you as a person. Mm. And he will look at you, are you a hard-working person? Yes. Are you a very enthusiastic, constituous person? A person, the answer is yes. He will then take you to what? إلى مجاوزة وغلو. It will he will push you towards exaggeration, because your nature is mashallah hard working. So push you towards extremism in going overboard, going be beyond the limits that were that were set for you, beyond the limits, I mean the, beyond the measures and the appropriate limit. If he realizes from you that you're a person who's lazy. Uh, who is uh, lackadaisical, what he will do to you is he will push you towards negligence, extreme in negligence. And then Ibn al-Qayyim says that the Salaf used to say, وَلَا يُبَالِ الشَّيْطَانُ بِأَيِّهِمَا ظَفْبِرْ He doesn't care which of these two he, ex- he succeeds, succeeds, succeeds in. He doesn't care whichever of those two he is successful in. Whether he pushes you to extreme exaggeration or extreme <coughs> negligence to him, as long as he takes you away from what? وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَطْغَوْا إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارُ As long as he can take you away from what? The istiqama, the upright, the steadfastness that was needed from you. The middle path, the moderation, as long as he can take you from that, he doesn't care whether it's exaggeration or negligence. He succeeded in his mission, and mission accomplished. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to stop there with Ibn al Kareem. Inshallah tomorrow, I'm going to carry on by speaking about Madahirul Ghulu. How does extremism manifest, and how does it come, and where, it, where does it occur in? That, inshallah ta'ala, will be the fourth, I think, inshallah ta'ala. And then after that, the fifth will be al-ilaj, how to cure extremism, bithinillahi al-kareem. Any mistake, shortcoming, errors, faults that I have said is from me and shaytan and Allah and his messenger are totally free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.